Last week I spoke about educated idiots. The response I got was interesting to say the least, and I thank everyone who watched the video. This time I'm going to speak about another kind of idiot. This sort of person also affects the world in a negative way, and like the educated idiot, they are most likely convinced that they are helping instead of hurting. Have you ever met someone who is absolutely convinced of the justice of their cause, to the point of activism for a cause which will actually harm them? Then you've met a useful idiot. As I look around, I see plenty of examples of useful idiots of all political stripes. Let's talk about it. The term useful idiot dates back to the start of the Cold War. It's often misattributed to Vladimir Lenin, although there are no references in his works to the phrase. It is confirmed, however, that it appeared in a New York Times article published in 1948 which described the political situation in Italy. In short, a useful idiot is someone who becomes an activist for a cause which they do not fully comprehend. Their efforts assist the leaders of that cause in attaining their goals, and often involve propaganda, proselytizing, and protesting. Although there really is no limit in what ideologies make use of useful idiots, the term is most commonly used when referring to socialists and communists. Now, with all due respect to those who believe that only socialists and communists can be useful idiots, I beg to differ. During the very period in which the term originated, the United States was experiencing the Red Scare. McCarthyism quickly rallied those sufficiently frightened of totalitarianism, fascism, socialism, and communism into reporting fellow Americans for subversion and even treason without regard to evidence or due process. Blacklists were issued, most notably in Hollywood, which made it almost impossible for hundreds of successful entertainers to find work. A series of laws were passed which effectively made membership in the Communist Party illegal in the United States. And interestingly enough, those laws are still on the books. There were useful idiots on both sides of this matter. While the public perception of communism in the U.S. certainly helped to put a lot of people in prison for holding different beliefs, which is a violation of the First Amendment, many members of the Communist Party of the United States, CPUSA, became disillusioned with the Communist Party when Nikita Khrushchev revealed Stalin's mass murders. That's also a key element of useful idiots. They know the supposed positive aspects of the ideology for which they advocate, but they usually don't know the negative aspects of it. In CPUSA's case, no one outside of the Soviet Union, and not everyone inside of it, knew that Stalin was killing his own people by the millions. Once that information became public, thanks to Khrushchev, many people who once believed in the utopian promises of communism abandoned the ideology altogether. A final key element of useful idiots is that they have very absolutist beliefs. You either support them or you are their enemy. Their way is the only way. Nothing will ever get better until their ideal system replaces the current system. I could give examples, but the problem is that when useful idiots are challenged on their views, they tend to become very defensive of those beliefs. Thus, if I give examples from the current socio-political situation, I stand little chance of actually persuading any of them to change their minds. No, a different approach is required. Useful idiots have to see for themselves that they are being used. They have to discover the inconsistencies in their ideology on their own, or their commitment to that ideology will only strengthen. So I'm going to provide a set of questions to ask. These can be applied to anything from Antifa to MAGA. Ask these questions and decide for yourself. But check this important detail before you ask the questions. Is this an ideology or political group which I support or which I despise? If this is a group which you support, then ask yourself the questions. If this is a group about which you have no strong feelings, feel free to use these questions to assess that group. But if this is a group for which your feelings are already strongly negative, 
I suggest that you don't ask these questions because of your pre-existing bias. It's too easy to create a confirmation bias against a group which you are already convinced is dangerous or even insane. First question to ask yourself. Do the activities of this group deviate strongly from what I would consider normal activities in the course of an average day? This can be a tricky question, especially for teenagers and younger adults. Teenagers are not entirely free from the rules of their parents, and what they consider to be normal is partially based on what their parents consider to be normal. Young adults typically have the opposite problem, plenty of time and energy to spare, and fewer responsibilities than older adults. Think of it this way, though. If you weren't involved in this group, would you engage in those activities on behalf of other groups with much different motivations and ideologies? If not, consider that you may be involved with a group which depends on activism, and such groups typically are long on ideology and short on real, practical answers to whatever issues drive them. Okay, next question. Qui bono? Who benefits from my activities? Qui bono is a basic tenet of any investigation. If you don't directly benefit from these activities beyond a vague sense of accomplishment, then who does benefit? If those who benefit most from the activities are those who lead the group or movement, then they are benefiting from you. If the benefits lie primarily outside of the group, and neither the leaders nor the members like you benefit in any particular way from the activities, then you're probably involved in a genuine charity. But someone always benefits, or the activities wouldn't be worth doing. Next question. Does your ideology actively label groups of complete strangers as bad, wrong, or evil? This question is easily answered, but problematic. Labeling actively racist organizations like the KKK as evil is probably accurate given their history. Labeling the military as evil probably isn't accurate in most instances, though. Labeling all members of an organization which volunteers in their community is insulting and incendiary and labeling any random person who doesn't agree with you the enemy is pretty clear evidence that your system of beliefs may be more extreme than you realize. Okay, next question. Are my beliefs interfering with my relationships? This one is a big warning sign. Human beings are social animals. We need membership in a group as a part of forming our identity, even if our membership in that group is a more antisocial role. If the beliefs of that group are causing you to abruptly end friendships, that's not a good sign. If those beliefs are causing you to cut ties with your family, that's really not a good sign. If the group advocates cutting ties and ending relationships with family and friends in order to foster a new, better world, mayday! No ideological group should require you to break ties with your family and friends who don't share your beliefs with a notable exception in those rare cases where your family and friends are actively breaking the law. Okay, last question. Can people disagree with you? If the last question was a big warning sign, this one is a mushroom cloud on the horizon. As things stand right now, cancel culture has the country by the throat. Different opinions on issues should not automatically cost anyone a job, a career, or even the possibility of future employment. Without the ability to disagree or to offer a different opinion, then debate isn't possible. And without debate, there is no solution. Some people might think that it's time for debate to end. I think that so long as we can actually talk about the issues openly, then we actually stand a chance of solving the problems we face. But that can't happen if cancel culture continues. Now eventually, all of this will end. When it does, will the country be ready to move forward together, or will we be so fractured that we can't move at all? Will we be a nation of rational beings, or will we be a nation of useful idiots? Think about it.